YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this. We know you love the e-bikes here. I'm Brian Phillips RC. So we decided we could not resist after we did the Ranger for Hay Bike, we could not resist going after the Explore as a review because this bike is everything I've been looking for with the exception of two-wheel drive. So we are super excited about this. It is a huge wheel. We have four inch fat tires, 20 inch, excuse me, 26 inch rims, which we had 20 inch rims on the Ranger. And this is still a 48 volt system. I'm just gonna blast through the specs so I don't forget something. It is called the Explorer, not the Explorer. So don't confuse that. Uh, same removable battery as before with a flip up seat. Uh, pulls out super easy. There's a locking key. Don't lose your keys, same as before. This one has a twist throttle as opposed to a thumb throttle. It is pedal assist. There are five speeds though instead of three. I don't know that that makes it faster. It's just the way they delimit the speed delivery when you're pedaling. This thing has the same Shimano uh, seven speed gearbox, but there is not a trigger to get to up front. It's just here and here, which I find to be the way I do it on the Ranger anyway. So very, very happy with the light. The light is adjustable as before, but better reflector on the front and the horn is actually up here as well. So you can do that. Flashing brake light as before, very bright, very easy to see. Mm -hmm. Also the reflectors on the wheels are very muted until they need to be seen, which is super cool. I love the way the thing rides. It rides bigger. Now this is a 77 pound bike though, so just keep that in mind. Typically if you were to uh, have a 77 pound bike, you would think that's a heavy bike, but you have to remember that much of that weight comes in the battery, which I'll just show you how easy it is to take this thing off. You have to turn the key all the way around so it is secured, and that's literally as easy as it is. And just like before, we have a push button where you can press and it does a little dance, and you can see those LEDs are quite bright, and so you can't actually see them. It's got the same twist protector, and the same mic jack plug. I just love the way that this thing works. It's super easy to get the battery on and off if necessary. So that's gonna be your biggest security feature is that you can go ahead and take the battery off. Of course, we all understand that's not gonna stop somebody from taking your bike and riding it off because it is after all still a bike. But just keep in mind, there is a power button here this is how you power it up once you have the key in the correct position. If it doesn't turn on, it's because your key is not in the run position. When you turn it on, the display comes on. This display is very bright. It's easy to see during the day. It may not film great, but it's very easy to see. You can see it's on plus five. Looks great, actually. Okay, so we've got zero, and then all the way up to plus five. I don't mess around. I go to the full speed all the time. <laughs> and obviously, we have a horn here. We have the light on off toggle. It's very quick and easy. Yes, you can flash the light on and off. Yes, you can adjust it while you're riding. Same is true for the Ranger. Yes, there is a lock and unlock on the shocks for the front of the bike. They work really good, but I choose to ride a little bit higher PSI than some of you guys might on these tires. I'm running mine at 18 and a half, which is a lot more than some of you guys are gonna choose to do, but I'm a big guy. I wanna be on there. I wanna know it's sure-footed under me but there's also a little bit of spring in the seat and there's spring up front, which makes for a very comfortable ride. I love the way the spokes look. The spokes on the Ranger were nice, but on the smaller wheel with a big guy, I tend to think it looks a little bit hokey. That being said, I love the way this looks. It's big, it has a step through frame still. Again, I could take it or leave it. This one doesn't fold. If you have a tight spot, the Ranger's definitely for you over the Explorer because this is a big bike. Uh, it is long. So the package weight is 102 and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. So was. when your delivery guy comes, he is not gonna be your friend. Make sure that you have a cold beverage for them. Uh, the max load on this bike, this is one of the big ticket items for you guys. If you're a big guy like me, I'm about 285 dressed. This is a 330 pound capacity. So you can ride this and actually have a little bit of girth. So that being said, very happy with that. Obviously Shimano, uh, derailleur on the back to, to pair up with the controls up front. Uh, very heavy duty kickstand. This one leans a lot more 
than the Ranger, I noticed. And so it does take up a little bit more room as a result. So if you wanted to fid fiddle with that, you could actually take up a little less room. Also, the brakes I have already adjusted to tighten up the play, which means I just barely have any movement before the brake engages. I love the way they're tight like that and crisp. They work really good. They have a good pad support here for your handles. So when you're riding on this thing and you're standing up and actually bearing uh, your own weight on a, a rough path, which is what you're gonna be doing on this bike, uh, it works flawlessly. Obviously we've got the included drink holder. You can get different types of racks set up. In our case, this is the standard one. You can get a forward, uh, a forward basket and I believe you can get a backward basket back here as well. There might be some saddlebag options as well. You can get this in white or black. I like black. I love the black on black mat. The mud flaps do work. I have ridden this on gravel, but only for about two seconds. So I wanted to kind of save the virgin run for that. And I have put about one mile on this myself, but it's at 3.7. I'm not sure why, I, I don't know. Maybe that was just because of the demo thing. But we have currently got about 114 or 15 miles on our other bike. And that's basically in our front yard and right adjacent to our front yard. So we don't go very far with our bikes. We don't charge hardly ever. The chargers on both of these bikes have been phenomenal. They work really good. They're heavy, high quality, but they are different. So just keep that in mind. This thing is rated for 28 miles an hour max speed, okay? Now, that being said, I believe that the speed uh, that you get, I have gone no faster than 27.2 miles per hour so far in this bike, but it gets you there quicker. Even though the specs look the same on this and the Ranger, this one will get you there a lot quicker. Also, it's gonna get you there with more comfort. Even though it's a heavier bike, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable in my opinion because the bigger wheels do the trick. So if you guys are in the market for an e-bike, do not discount Hay Bike. There's a million different choices out there on the interweb. And I can tell you this, we don't know which ones are the best, but we know that Hay Bike has done a great job. And we have compared multiple products from them, been very, very happy with them. My brother actually got one, which is cool. Um, we're very happy with ours. We hope they're happy with theirs. But the thing is they've only had it for a short time. So that being said, uh, we're gonna do a first run on this and then we'll put on a chest rig so you guys can ride along with us. And if you have questions, as always, leave your questions in the comments and we'll do our best to get to them. We've been super happy with Hay Bike. Yes, I know it's a little bit weird because this thing isn't radio controlled and it's not aviation, but it does cross over and we really like these products. Obviously we have this beautiful property and we intend to ride off road, which is why I want the fat tires. And yes, the fat tires do a great job no, you're not gonna be able to go up the side of a ditch with just about any e-bike out there, except for the one that goes like 80 miles an hour and you need a driver's license for it or a motorcycle license for it. These things do really good. I believe this one's rated for 14 degrees, which is a lot more. Our hills are not anywhere near that. So we can get up, but we lose speed and you'll be lucky to go about half the max speed on a normal hill if you're a big guy. If you're a small guy or small girl, you're gonna get up the hill a lot quicker. So just remember that. Also, if you bring a lot of payload with you, which you can load this thing down like crazy, uh, you will use up a lot more capacity there and you're gonna demand a lot more from your motor. So that being said, oh, actually, did there was there a wattage on that? Uh, this, this was just a spec sheet. We'll just go ahead and uh, put it here in case you guys didn't hear anything I said. So you can see right here, this is the max speed, the max speed right here. It says 28 miles per hour. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so also I just wanna let you guys know um, if you're interested in a hay bike, check out the links in the video description below. If you buy from the links, you'll help support our channel. We never wanna talk you guys into buying something you don't have interest in. But at the same time, if you're picking between this and another bike, we definitely have been very happy with hay bike and we think you will be too. So that being said, we're happy to be sharing it with you. Uh, we do have an unbox and build setup, uh, whatever you want to call it, coming up following our maiden runs. So stay tuned. And then later, we should be doing a video that just kind of compares the two, the Ranger and the uh, Explore uh, side by side. And we're going to try to do a quick ride for you guys together. 
so that we can show you just how fun it really is. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna do some on-road acceleration and deceleration uh, from the camera person's perspective, and then we'll show with a chest rig too. So don't worry, it's all coming. Now, if you've never ridden an e-bike, a couple things to keep in mind. Don't rest your foot on the pedal and then accidentally run into your car when you're pulling out of the garage because it will lunge forward. It's a crazy amount of power. So if you're not sure, hold the brake and that disallows everything from running until you're ready. Also, if you're holding this thing, if you wanna give them a closer shot, this is like a motorcycle. So it's got this spinning thing. And if you spin that, and then as soon as you let go, it's gonna go, okay? So just oh. be prepared. <laughs> Don't be scared, it's not scary. It is very exciting. If you've never ridden an e-bike, go find a bike shop and try it. And you will be amazed how much cooler it really is in real life than you might've thought it was. Because when I first started looking into e-bikes, I thought, okay, that's lame. And then my wife and I went and we uh, rode on some super expensive bikes that were like over $3,000 and I couldn't believe it. And I was sold, we were about ready to buy some. And then I said, no, let's do some more investigation. And I found, we ultimately ended up with Haybike and we're very happy so far. So super excited, way more bang for your buck with something like this. Yeah. If you got your local shop, you wanna help support, buy the bike from Haybike, bring it to the shop, pay them a couple hundred bucks to set the thing up and they'll be happy, you'll be happy. But in the meantime, check the links. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm just gonna pedal assist. I am in seventh gear. I pretty much always run in seventh gear. There's the kick in. <laughs> Notice I'm off road. It is not super smooth here. You guys already know from watching me crash planes here frequently. As you can see, I'm not a superhuman. <laughs> so now we're gonna turn around and come right back. I only made it to about 17 miles an hour. So just pedaling along. Got a little assistance from the anti-gravity motor and then good brakes. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> you can lock them up. So be careful. And the reason I show you that is because this thing will give you a false sense of security. It is basically like a motorcycle when you're driving it. I was only about halfway up the speed there, about 14 miles an hour going up this hill. That's crazy, guys. If you think that's not fast enough, you probably have had a much better e-bike. But I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you haven't ever driven an e-bike, the Explorer is gonna open your eyes to the possibilities. Now, that being said, we have a walkout ranch here and we have 23 acres. The main reason we got this bike was so that we could run out, do things, come back, put the tools away and go for it, you know, because this is a utility item for us. Mm -hmm. Why this instead of a UTV or an ATV or whatever? Because we don't, we were stupid. We built a small garage. We should have built a six car garage and we built a three car garage. Yep. That was not enough. We didn't know. This fits better. So. That's part of the reason why we went with it. That is crazy, the amount of yes. carnage I just did. All right, so I am in speed five again. I'm gonna go down to speed one. And just to show you how easy it is, all you have to do is press the number. If you go to zero, nothing happens. If you hold the negative sign, it will walk. But look how fast that is. Okay, so that's the hill setting. Now keep in mind, if you are holding the brake as you deploy the hill setting, watch what happens. I'm gonna hold a brake and I'm gonna deploy this setting by holding down. Nothing, it's exactly the same as if you held the brake any other time. Watch what happens when I let go of the brake. I'm pressing down with my left thumb and I'm holding the brake, I let go. Whoa, okay, all right. So if you don't wanna push a 77 pound bike up a hill, you can use that to help you while you're not seated. It's very nice. Now that being said, if you come around to this side and you really wanna get crazy with it, all you gotta do is go into whatever gear you want and then you can try to walk with it, but you are not gonna be able to walk fast enough, I promise you. That's on speed one. So generally speaking, the walk along speed is about half of the lowest speed, and in this case, it's still pretty fast in my opinion. So that being said, you're gonna also be tired from working out and riding a bike, except I don't ride this like a bike, I ride it like a moped. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back up to speed five because that's just the way we do things here, and I'm gonna basically show you no pedaling this time. You don't have to assist the bike. It will do it all if you want. 18 miles an hour, 19 miles an hour before I even get out of the driveway. Amazing. 
Okay, still no pedaling here, okay? This is a rough area. Guys, look at this, that's crazy. I mean, I'm not messing around, I'm going 15 miles an hour here. So just to give you an idea, 15 miles an hour off-road should be crazy. You should be like flying out of your seat, spilling your drink, looking like a complete fool. This thing will keep you seated. It will keep you comfortable. It's sweet because you can go over some crazy bumps. Now like that tall grass over there probably doesn't look like much, but that tall grass probably eight inches tall. You cannot ride through eight inch tall grass. I'm gonna just go over our little bridge and come back and just show you that real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and go into a low gear so I can help on the way back. Just wanna point this out, different gear selector than in the Ranger, okay? Because there's only one gear, you can kind of switch your gears without having problems with the derailleur in my experience. One thing that I don't like about the e-bikes, and this has been true of every e-bike, is getting out of the hole, depending on the e-bike, as opposed to pedaling to help, sometimes leaves you a little bit high and dry. So just to be aware, if you're going up a real steep hill or you're in a rough area, you gotta help it along, okay? And your balance does matter. Okay, so I'm gonna let go of the brake and then let the engine do the work. Okay, so now I'm into about third gear. I'm not actually gonna do much with it. <clears throat> That's just about the midpoint of our property. It goes all the way up to the road. So you can see where it's a lot more speedy to jump on a bike and go check something or go do something quick versus walking. Just some light pedaling to go up that hill. That's crazy. That was not bad. No, it's not bad at all. That's crazy. And see, the crazy part is what you guys don't understand is if I was on a regular bike, there is no way I would have made it up that hill. Not even close. So that being said, I love this bike because it's big enough. It's powerful enough. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you one drawback. <clears throat> It gets a little bit close to the family jewels here. So in fact, if you had a, a big bottle of water, <laughs> they may not fit there. So my seat is all the way back. So even though this is a step through frame, it is tight with the drink. Do I want the drink? Yes, I do. Why? Because I use this to hold tools. So I just hope I don't jump off and have an interaction that's undesirable. So that's something you wanna keep in mind if you are standing on the bike. Okay. Now also I want to talk to you about roughness at 18 and a half PSI. I feel like that might be a little bit high. The max is 20 on these tires. I know for sure you could run them lower and you'd have good experience. You'd be a little bit better on the off-road side of things, especially if you're trying to do sand. So the, the traction on these tires is really good, except for when you really slam the brakes on, on a hard flat surface. I feel like they slip a little bit easy, but that's just the way it is. The good news is this thing will do gravel, it'll do grass, it'll do mud, it'll do all the stuff that we're gonna run into, which is what I was concerned about. Now, what you may not be able to see is out there, we have alfalfa. And if you don't know what alfalfa is, mm -hmm. no, alfalfa is what they use to feed animals instead of just regular grass hay like what we've got here. If you're not a farmer, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. You're like, hay's hay, right? No, it's not. That stuff is like a big bush. Mm -hmm. And that bush, I drive through with this and it will do just fine. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do some full speed passes and the camera crew is gonna be on the road and you're gonna watch me go by really quick and then I'll take you for a ride next. <laughs> Just a little joy riding, getting ready for our next shot. Okay, so number one problem I had with the Ranger was the clearance of the pedals. And I just wanna demonstrate the clearance of the pedals on the crown of this road. I have my left foot down and I, and I just bump at the very crown. I bump my heel, you see this? It's, it's clearer than it was on the other bike, okay? You see that? I bumped, okay? If I was driving the Ranger, the Ranger would be more inclined to bump anytime I lean to the side. So that is a bit of a drawback because when you're making some massive speed and you wanna make a sharper turn, you have to be mindful of your foot position. So just keep that in mind. The pedals are long enough to get good leverage. I'm in speed three. There's plenty of power there and torque to get out of the hole. I'm gonna show you just going into a crazy like ditch area here. This is not something I would do with an, uh, an inferior bike, guys. Look at this. Just going down with the brakes and everything. That is not a shallow hill, by the way. This is very rough. This is where we've been doing our crawler stuff. 
and the bike does great, but it's still steep. Let's see if I can get out of here. That's pretty steep. I don't know if I can do that. I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have it walk me out, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way down to the zero setting and then I'm gonna press and hold it and let it walk. So if you wanna get out of a ditch and you don't wanna ride it. Now I could probably ride that, but I feel like that's something that'll come with practice. So this time I wanna go for a full speed pass and I'm in zero speed, so I'm gonna kick it back up to five and we'll just get up to speed. So starting from zero, you do have miles per hour with a decimal value. You can toggle what your screen says with two buttons here. There's an odometer, there's a max speed, there's an average speed and a trip. Then you can go to darker mode or brighter mode. And then there's also a menu structure that you can enter to make some changes to your settings. There is not a way to change the speed setting on this bike that I know of yet. If you find out, leave it in the comments below. I wanna know because this thing is blazing fast already and any faster I can make it, all the better. So we'll do this pass and forgive the audio. I'll probably lose my wireless range when I get away, but we'll do a full speed pass both directions. And then we'll show you how much we lose speed going up that little hill there. So without further ado, from dead still. Okay, so I'm in seventh gear, just so you guys know, full throttle and pedaling, but light. So he's gonna go all the way up to the corner. And when he turns around and when I can hear him, I'll try and kind of call out what he's saying for speed. <clears throat> So that's pretty much the edge of our property up there where he's turning around. So he's gonna go full speed, I think, past me right here at our driveway. I think he should be up here. So that was 28 going downhill, 23 away. 28 going downhill doesn't look like much of a hill there, but it definitely is, especially if you're looking at speed on a bike. And so then he's right about to our property line, almost right there where he is. That is a pretty steep hill there, going up to the cemetery that we always talk about, was where that white fence is up there. So I think he'll go all the way up there and turn around. And then he'll have an even better speed coming down this way. <coughs> So we're at 25, just under 24.6 here, and we'll do a full deceleration. So that's full deceleration. And as you can see, we started at the sign. So this thing slows down fast, but it's fast enough you gotta be on it. I wasn't pedaling hard, I'm just out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> but we went 23.2 that way, 28 back, meaning I pedaled, and it was at the full 25 mile an hour electric speed. And then on that hill, we dropped down to about 17 and a half before my throttle kicked back in to help with my pedaling. So we're gonna pause and get the chest rig on. All right guys, so we got a chest rig on, so we're just gonna come out to this beautiful hay bike. Obviously it looks just amazing. We got a beautiful sunset for you guys tonight. Camera crew, hi. Hi, hi camera crew. <laughs> so this is a new chest rig, so hopefully it works good. Out kicked my leg doing that, that was fun. Okay, I'm gonna go into the fifth, fifth speed and just kind of manipulating the camera so you guys can see what's going on. And my wife's camera is a Galaxy S21 Ultra. Yes. So it's kind of huge. And we're just gonna try to adjust a little bit here so you guys can see. All right, here we go, just a little light pedaling to assist. Goodness gracious, this thing is so speedy, it's awesome. Okay, so we're going up the same hill that we just did here a minute ago. The only difference is you guys are on for the ride this time. 
I'm holding the throttle back as you can see with this hand here. We're just gonna brake and obey the traffic signal, which says stop. We're gonna do a turn here real quick. And I wanna start straight from the hole here. And I wanna do a small adjustment. So basically, as you can see, we got a quarter mile here. I'm gonna try to get this angle so you guys can see what's up. Okay, because we know you guys are concerned about the speed. All right, here goes nothing. Throttle. Okay, trying to have good posture so you guys can see what you need to see. Look how fast this thing gets out of the hole, it's crazy. back in the throttle here about 18 or so there it goes I am pedaling light but mostly at an idle okay so we're coming up to an intersection here and I talked about gravel I don't intend to ride a lot on gravel but we'll do this just for you guys so we're gonna go gravel if you've ever driven on gravel, it's a little bit unnerving in a, a bicycle because it's so loose. But I'm going 24 miles an hour, no problem. I'm just going to slow down and stop and turn around here. Okay, so we have good controllability, as you can see. No issues here at all. And look how loose this stuff is. It's really loose. So if you've never ridden a bike on gravel, you won't have an appreciation for this. Maybe you don't have gravel roads anywhere near where you live, but give it a shot sometime. This thing handles the gravel very good and it gives us just no problems at all. So now I'm going about 23 miles an hour on gravel, switching to asphalt here. I'm gonna just do only motor this time, I'm going downhill for a little bit of assistance. Should get us to about 25 miles an hour. I am in speed five for whatever reason it didn't kick in. So as I pedal, there it goes. So I'm gonna make a turn. We're gonna go in to the driveway here. So we'll take this turn pretty quick and then we'll actually go off road right here. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. I mean, we're not messing around. It's, it's pretty speedy. Go right in front of the camera crew. Totally disregard all logic and reasoning and go off road again for no apparent reason. And then we'll go through some thicker grass. That's very rough just to show you that this thing handles it like a champ. Run over that big whatever weed that was. And here we go. And just kind of clipping all the corners I could clip to demonstrate how nice and smooth the transaction is. Okay, now we'll just do a little bit wider angle for you this time. We got an approach here we can turn around. This is actually our approach too, so. Really rough, nasty driveway. And then this is alfalfa, okay? So now if you guys can tell, but that stuff is tall. It's thick. It's not something you would ordinarily ride through. And the guy who's farming this probably would not like me going through it too much, but that's why you buy your own land. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're gonna just make a turn and show you this path here real quick. Woohoo! And we're in seventh gear. A Little bit of pedal assistance here. And look at this, guys. You're talking about 20 feet of elevation change up and down. And here we go. Guys, this, this bike is a blast to drive. It works amazing. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and hop off of here and just go ahead and do a little quick in closing. Okay, so as you can see, I get a kick out of driving this thing. It is way more capable than the Ranger. It doesn't seem like it would be on paper but it really is. It's also heavier and more expensive than the Ranger, 
but I love this bike. This is the bike for me. It is definitely the one I'm gonna be riding because it fits my body better. Couple things to keep in mind. Clearance on the pedals still suffers a little bit in my opinion. Uh, you basically have seven speeds, that's it. It's not uncommon on e-bikes for them to do that. So don't be surprised. Obviously this is a rear hub drive so it's not in the center and so there's no uh you know gearing that happens it's just a direct drive thing and then of course your pedaling is geared so you can change the gear ratio for your human power but not necessarily for the motor power also they're claiming many 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 miles and i just don't even like to talk about truth claims on miles because i feel like there's such a huge variant mm -hmm. from one driver to the next i mean just even from megan to me on the same bike, just the, the difference in weight alone would make a big difference. She'd get way more mileage than me. So, but then she's also gonna be a lot more timid with the throttle. She's not gonna use the electric assist near as much as I will because I want the electric assist. I want it to do the work. I wanna be lazy, which is awesome. Now you don't have to be lazy. You can still get out there and get a really nice workout on a bike like this. As you can see, I'm kind of huffing and puffing, but it doesn't take much. I could like you know, walk out the door for the day and I start doing that. So at any rate, love the Hay Bike Explore. Great bike. If you guys are thinking about getting an e-bike, do not discount Hay Bike. Check out the website. There's links in the video description below. I know you guys aren't used to seeing me in this awesome chest rig, but it's a new toy. So hopefully it works well. I think it kind of was a little bit too wiggly in my opinion. So hopefully you guys will agree or disagree. Let us know in the comments below. We're always trying to listen to you guys and do the best we can to adapt to your needs. Now, that being said, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna adapt to their needs. They want us to tell you this, that, and the other thing. We're gonna tell you what we found, not what's in the marketing literature, because that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we give you the no BS, unbox, build, radio setup of airplanes, aircraft, and all those different things that we do up to and including electric bikes. We love bringing you guys this stuff here on YouTube. And there's not many channels out there that are gonna give you this straight story. If this thing was a turd, we would have told you that, but I'm super excited about this thing. It's about as far from a turd as we've done in the history of the channel. So very excited about it. Um, I cannot wait to take it out there and try to break it. It's gonna be fun, because I probably will at some point. I did slide off that ditch with the Ranger and I scratched my leg. But other than that, I haven't had any problems with it. So I had to tighten the, the pedal like four times. <laughs> so I don't know if you're supposed to lock tight them or what, but I've had to tighten them a couple of times. Also, this does come with tool set uh, similar to what the Ranger had. And in fact, the Ranger had a little bit more tools. I don't know why that is. Uh, this one, we weren't lacking for tools. We used uh, tools to open up our box and stuff like that, which you'll see if you stay tuned for the unbox, which is coming immediately after this part of the video. And please do, as usual, leave your comments down in the comments. We'll do our best to get to them. Uh, don't worry, this is not like what we're going to do all the time now, as would be true for any of the stuff we do, because we do a lot of variety on this channel. We cover stuff about this property. We cover stuff about aircraft, about flying PPG, about cats, um, you know, about air filters and, well, wait, not air filters, mm -hmm. air, 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 air chucks yep. and then shameless kitten ads. Yes. But anyway, we do all sorts of cool stuff on the, on the channel, stuff that interests Brian Phillips and or Megan Phillips. Uh, we bring up on the channel. So we hope that you guys get a kick out of it once in a while when we kind of go off the wall. The e-brakes are just, we just feel like there's so many people that are into radio controlled airplanes that would be into this sort of thing because it's after all like a giant ride on electronic, which is super cool. And no, you couldn't really get them about 10 years ago. They just didn't exist. So it's really cool. Um, or if they existed, you were you know, like a geeky neighbor of mine named Esteban. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah, That's which is funny. Um, side note story, because Brian Phillips would not be Brian Phillips without a Brian Phillips story. So Brian Phillips story. About the time we started this channel, slightly before I met Esteban, the Notorious, our only Latin cameo on Brian Phillips RC. And uh, I met his son and his wife walking along, we were flying a Sport Cub SUMX with LEDs on it that I had modified. And they were super excited. And then like the next day, some dork on an electric bike that he had made himself, not like this at all. It, he was a total dork. He goes around the corner and he's all excited about the same airplane. And so flash forward seven years, seven and a half years, Eight, yep, and like we're that. still buddies. Yep. So anyway, good things can happen if you're a dork 
I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> you know, so keep being, uh, or sorry, not a dork, but a geek. Or a nerd. Or a nerd. I don't know what you are. Either one. I, I don't know. know. Things. These things would, would have been considered negative a while ago, but I, I really don't care what people think. It's, this is the way we are. So we love doing this stuff. We want to bring you guys, you know, anybody can read you a spec sheet, which we also did. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it's all about the experience for us. And I think this thing is going to really enrich your life if you get it. Uh, they are not cheap. Yes, there are a lot of choices out there online. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like there's not a better one or a worse one. There's, there's a lot on both sides of the spectrum. What I can do for you is I can confirm that Hay Bike is the real deal. So if you get onto the website and you think, you know, this seems a little scammy. Well, it's not scammy. It's the real deal. So we've been very, very happy with it. We got the thing very quick within a couple of days. I think it was like four days ship time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we communicated with them on late in a week and then they, they said they were shipping it maybe on like a Friday and then it shipped the next week. I think we had it here on Thursday. So no hiccups there. Our FedEx guy was great. He helped to get it up inside the house. Yes, 102.5 pounds is what it says on the package weight and I believe it. Yes. So very heavy package. Uh, so if they're including packaging, uh, in the price, just believe me, that is a great value. So, and they're not doing LTL less than truckload. They're doing regular ground delivery. Mm -hmm. So they are paying through the teeth for these deliveries. So anyway, that all being said, I hope you choose to get one because it's super fun. If you want a commuter bike, I still think the Ranger might be a great fit for you because this one is a lot more impractical in certain regards but it's more practical in other regards. So you guys have to kind of match that up with your own lifestyle. But in my opinion, I feel like the Ranger folds into a tight package. It still gives you a lot of bang for your buck and it is significantly cheaper. But that being said, if you want a better riding experience, which for me, I want the better riding experience. I really don't care if it folds. Folding is cool, that's great, but I really don't care. I'm not gonna fold it. So this bike, does all the things I want and it does it better than the Ranger, but the Ranger's still great. So stay tuned guys, so much more from Brian Phillips RC coming at you. Check the link in the video description below if you're gonna buy this thing, you'll help support our family and our channel. That is after all how we fund it. We get small commissions from the companies we work with. We have never tried to hide behind that guys. We don't wanna be unclear with you. That is predominantly how we fund this channel, not from ad revenue, not from backdoor deals. They give us small commissions when you buy stuff. That's it. Same thing with Horizon. Same thing with everybody else we work with. That is how we make money on the YouTube channel and how we keep this thing rolling along. Because it is an incredible amount of work. And you probably don't realize that because you see the 15 minutes of fun or three hours. <laughs> and uh, you don't see the <clears throat> 23 hours that we spent to make all that happen. So at the end of the day, we love bringing you good content here on Brian Phillips RC. So smash the like button, help support us in that way too, if you don't mind. And if you haven't already clicked the bell for notifications, we're trying to release footage about three to four times a week. Weekends are gonna be reserved for weird one-off stuff like this. Wednesdays are probably gonna be car stuff, ground stuff, surface, boats, that sort of thing. And then Monday through Wednesday, we're gonna throw something aviation. And then the second half of the week, we're gonna do another half with uh, some sort of an aviation fixed wing RC is what we're gonna try to do. So anyway, if you guys haven't figured that out, that's what we've been doing for a while and it seems to be working good. So if you guys like the format, we've been splitting out the unboxes so that they're separate just because people have demanded that. So we're trying to do that right now. Although this particular video, it's all gonna be in one because mm -hmm. that's what these guys wanted and we felt like that was a reasonable accommodation. So anything you wanna say about this bike, camera crew? I think, I know you're super excited about it. I can always tell when you really like something. So. And I've been sick, so that's yeah. why I sound terrible. Sorry. And we unboxed this, I was more sick, so I'm just about done. And uh, it sucks getting sick, but you know what? There's something about being sick that reminds you uh, how much nicer it is to not be sick. <laughs> so <laughs> we're very happy about that. And fortunately, uh, just me and one of our daughters got sick this time instead of the entire family. So that's always nice. Yep. So I'm calling it a victory. Yes, for sure. So. Forgiveness for the scratchy voice, please, people. We appreciate it. And we hope you'll stick around. We have so much more coming. In fact, we have about six or seven big boxes that are gonna be super exciting to be opening for you anytime soon. Stay tuned. 
YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Normally I would lift up a box now that we're about to open, but this one's kind of big. It's a little heavy. So we're gonna go over here. You guys already know what this is because you've seen us writing it, <laughs> but this is how it comes in the package. So we always do an unbox build and radio setup. In this case, we're gonna spare you the radio setup. Hopefully. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah. So this is, this is the Hay Bike Explorer. Not to be confused with Explorers. That's a type of truck made by a large automotive company. <laughs> oh, goodness. This box is huge. So it is 103 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that's like the real deal. Now, the last time we opened one of these, we uh, kind of did it in the hardest possible way. So we're doing that so we're, again? We're going to try to do that again. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so for your viewing pleasure. Um, it was delivered by our poor UPS guy, FedEx, FedEx guy. guy, and uh, that guy was like really helpful. <laughs> so special thanks to our FedEx guy because uh, this thing is huge. Yes. So I'm going to use a pair of Lyman pliers because I like to pull staples as I go because we have a hardwood floor and I don't want to scratch the floor. And also they recommend keeping the box for 30 days just in case something would go wrong and you have to ship anything back. So I'm just going to start going to town on staples. Now there's more than one way to skin this cat. And so I don't want to bemoan what is a pretty simple process, but opening these boxes is going to help to give you guys confidence to be able to buy such an expensive item online. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, <clears throat> we have reviewed several different e-bikes now, and we really enjoy the concept of e-bikes. Um, you know, within the biking community, I know that that turns into a kind of a strange world of microcosm of people that like e-bikes and don't like e-bikes. We love e-bikes because we don't do a lot of biking in general. <clears throat> if it weren't for the e, we probably wouldn't do much biking. <laughs> we would not. So that being said... We want to bring this to you so you guys can make up your own mind as to whether or not you think it's worth the kind of cash they're asking for it. Because when you get into this feature set, they get pretty expensive. So that being said, we love our first hay bike. And so that's why we are super excited to be bringing you the Explore. Um, our last one was the Ranger. Ranger. Mm -hmm. And I have over 100 miles on it now. And we're going to be doing a review uh, with both of them side by side. And that was just from earlier this summer. Yeah, it was earlier this summer. So we haven't even had it very long. That's right. <clears throat> okay, so I can see immediately we've got some double reinforced foam, foam here. So I can feel where the frame is. And then I can feel these are just folded boxes. And then this heavy duty foam on the ends. And then it looks like a box of tools maybe, if I remember right. Okay, so I'm going to actually open the box of tools. The thing that's really nice about this bike is it is going to come with all the tools necessary to put it together with the exception of, I think, a utility knife. And then I use Lyman pliers to pull staples. So you wouldn't have to use Lyman pliers. You could just do it with a screwdriver or, you know, something similar. Okay, so inside of this box, you're going to find a number of different tools. And looks like some caps for screws when you're done putting the pedals on and things like this. You do have to put the pedals on, which is not a big deal. I thought it was gonna be a big deal, but it was actually super easy last time. And uh, you can tighten them this way, and then there's another way to do it too, but I'll show you that when we get to that point. Then it looks like this is probably the charger. I was super impressed with how easy it's been to charge our existing uh, Ranger, so I'm hoping it uses the exact same charger. And the thing that's nice is the rack on the back of the bike is a great place to lay the charger. And when you feel a charger, here, camera crew, mm -hmm. that's heavy, you know you're getting something real. Because <laughs> what's not heavy is cheap, crappy chargers. Yep. And this is heavy, so that means that there's a heat sink in it. It's gonna have a higher safety margin in that regard. If you get really cheap off-brand stuff, sometimes you're gonna find that the charger is one of the areas that they save money on. And that's when people end up with fires in their garages, so be careful. This is actually pretty heavy duty stuff. And also it uses a heavy duty mic plug, which is really nice because you don't have to worry about some little rinky dink connector. Now that being said, 
most of the e-bikes tend to be pretty pricey anyway. Even the cheap ones are pricey. So this one, in our case, comes with a regular style plug like you'd see on the back of a computer or, you know, like a radio or a clock or something like that. And that goes into the uh, charger. And then, of course, this goes into the wall. Wall outlet, in our case, 110. And there's a green light that comes on. Okay, our other one had a cooling fan on it, so I'm not 100% sure if this one, looks like this one doesn't have a cooling fan on it. So that's kind of interesting because I believe it is the same voltage as the Ranger. This one might be more. I can't remember. Hmm. So anyway, that's everything that's in here. Looks like it's got like a model number on it. So we'll just set that aside for the moment. <clears throat> I'm bringing my cutting utensils back over to the box. I do remember we had some struggle getting it out of the box just because we didn't maybe do it in the most intelligent order on the last go round. So we're gonna try to be a little bit more careful about this. And I think what, what I wanna try to do is see if I can lift the sides. No, they're not gonna lift off. And it says this side up, it's definitely listed. So you know what direction goes up. And I think we can just rip the sides down, but I don't really wanna do that. I wanna see if I can just pull this whole thing out. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know yet. Because didn't we roll it out last time? Okay, so big, heavy duty, thick, thick foam. I mean, the kind you can't squish. And it's certainly not like foam from the airplanes and helicopters and things like that that we run into a lot on this channel. Now, one of the primary differences between this and the Ranger is look how big the wheels are. Mm -hmm. These are 26 inch wheels and they're four inch fat tires. So very excited about that because being that I am a six foot one guy and I'm definitely bigger than your average Chinese person. So I need to have a little bit bigger bike. <clears throat> so that being said, when you're in the process of looking for a bike, that is one of the things that's challenging is that you're gonna find that a lot of these bikes, they are sized for what I would say like a larger teenager or women mm -hmm. because they're just a little bit smaller. So even the Ranger is a little bit smaller than I would have picked, but the thing is it fits my body well. It does. And it handles the weight too. A 20 inch tire, it seems to be fairly standard on most of the e-bikes that we've yeah. looked they, at or reviewed. They do fold small because mm -hmm. of it. Okay, so just looking from the top, um, another tool that I, I know we're going to need now is we're going to need some side cutters so we can cut this. Mm. Uh, you can use scissors, but I wouldn't recommend it because scissors are going to allow you to basically bend the blade and you could end up cutting yourself. So I would highly recommend if you have access to side cutters, use side cutters. They're going to be a safer tool for cutting these larger zip ties. If you need to use a knife, that's fine. Just don't stab yourself doing it. Don't use your wife's like nice scissors. Yes, don't. You'll get in trouble. There's nothing good that will come idea. of it. One of the things I've been very happy with on our other bike from Hay Bike is that the seat is quite comfortable. I mean, it's still a bike seat. So I don't know that there really is technically a comfortable bike seat, but this is about as comfortable as it gets. And it folds up very quick and very easy so you can get to the battery. So very happy with the bike seat. Um, it doesn't look bad. I, I feel like sometimes the more comfortable the seat is, the more ridiculous it looks. And also, <clears throat> these are cushioned. And uh, of course, it's kind of hard to demonstrate just because it's, it's stiff. And then you can actually adjust it in there too. Hmm. So that's pretty sweet. Um, very happy with the seat. You do have to put the seat on. There's not really any part of this assembly process that's especially difficult. It's just that there's quite a few small steps and the small steps are not hard. So don't be afraid of asking for help when you have to pick something up though, because this is kind of a big package. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing you wanna watch out for. Now I can reach the battery here. So if you guys see the battery is locked in place and they have included the keys right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rip those off and then I'm gonna unlock the battery. Uh, where is the key? Where does the key go on this one? Feels like that's the charger plug cover. Yep, that's where the mm -hmm. charger would go. And then I'm just feeling around because I haven't actually done it yet. Oh shoot, is it down here? Looks like it's down there, so I can't quite get to it yet. Well, we'll know where the keys are now at least. I was hoping I could take that off, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get to that. So we'll just kind of keep working through this project here. So as you know, here on Brian Phillips RC, we like to review lots of different a variety of items. Generally speaking, the fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, quads, that's the most of what you see, but then occasionally we'll 
take a little bit of a detour on things like e-bikes and we really enjoy and we feel like there's enough of an audience that crosses over to these things that we don't feel like it's a super big stretch. Um, but at the end of the day, we really do enjoy it. So we want to bring it to you uh, here on Brian Phillips RC. So we appreciate you guys giving us attention on stuff like this. That's maybe a little bit off the standard topics or the most popular stuff we do. Okay, so you can see this wheel has this mud flap on it, but it feels like it's zip tied on. I wonder if we're to it's the point. Up, zip tied up there. <clears throat> yeah, it's zip tied in more than one spot mm. though. We're just trying our best to get this thing out without causing lots and lots of extra headache. I doubt this is gonna come out all the way. This one is quite a bit bigger bike than the other bike we, we have. It is. I can already tell, but I'm super excited about that because I'm a big guy, okay? So nice matte black finish. These things do give a lot, which they are super effective on the Ranger uh, at keeping the water off of you while you're driving through puddles because bigger tires means more debris gets shot up or driving on gravel. So if you guys ever have to drive on gravel and that one's tied way down there, it's actually the pedal is shot through. So I won't be able to get that out yet. And it looks like this is just the rack. So yeah, at this point, we're either gonna have to lift the whole shebang out or we're gonna have to cut the box away. So I think at this point, I'm gonna try to start cutting the box away. And that's gonna be our next move. So cutting the box away in my case, I think I'm gonna just go along the seam here and just carefully cut. And I don't wanna go too deep. I don't wanna get through to the product. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the bottom and come back. Okay, very good. Then once this side falls down, we'll be able to get to it. We can just kind of slide things out of the way. Do I need to keep a hand on? Yeah, why don't you just keep a hand on this so it doesn't fall. Okay. And I'm just finding the seam here and just working my way down a little bit and then from the bottom up. Okay, so we'll just drop this down carefully. Maybe I can do it like this. Oh yeah, that worked out pretty good. So our entryway is not a, an especially sprawling place within our home. Mm -mm. Okay, you can let go of that. Okay. okay, so you can see what I was talking about. The tires mm. and wheels are tied together. Love the spokes on this thing, it's beautiful. Black on black, flat black no less. Looks just really cool. This is also available in white. White and a well. white and black, I thought. The website will show you guys. Mm -hmm. Also, if you want to help support our channel, one of the best things you can do is buy the stuff that we review. We have links so that you can buy this for yourself. Obviously, we get small commissions from the companies we work with. When we bring an item like this to you, it's especially helpful because the bigger dollar items add up a little quicker. So, very cool. Love that this is actually a pretty big tire. Max Inflate 20 PSI, keep that in mind. Oh. These big wheels don't necessarily allow for quite as much. Good protection, bike to bike protection here. Okay, so very thick foam. Love the reflector, looks so clean. Look at those brakes, disc brakes obviously. And then on the other side here, this is actually gonna get taken off because that's just a protective cover so that it has a little bit more uh, surface area on the side of the box. So we're just gonna keep working so the next thing we have to do is we have to figure out what we're going to do next, as in, do we pull this out? Do we try to cut more of the box away? And I think really what we could do is I could probably just untangle this and try to walk it back a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> because this is going to be a little bit challenging to handle. Um, I want to see if I can grab here and just kind of spin it, pivot it. Oh yeah. Cam crew, would you grab a hand on that on the back? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pivot. I feel like I'm tied one more spot. Is it, or is it just stuck in I the foam? I think it's just stuck in the foam down here. All right, guys. So I'm just going to walk this out. Perfect. All right. So it's balancing. Okay. So now what I think I want to do is I want to try to roll this into an opened area. And we're going to take the foam that's on the ground behind the camera crew. We're going to lay that underneath uh, the yoke and just make sure we don't damage our floor because it is like about a million degrees outside right now. Yes. So we're actually gonna be doing this. 
inside because we're smart. And if you guys do this outside, that's also fine, but uh, I wouldn't suggest it. Okay. <clears throat> and if you can throw that Put down fairly quick, please. Under here. Thank you. Okay. And the pedals, the pedals decided to turn a little bit, so I'm going to just back those up. All right. So now my next thing I have to do is start kind of just taking some of this covering off because obviously it's, oh man, that looks so good. Super excited. I was thinking I'd have to take the bike uh, battery off so that we could get it out of there, but we don't really even have to do that. And I was disappointed to see this foam here, but it looks like that's going to get covered up anyway because that's where your handlebar is going to get mounted. All right. So it looks like we've got a little bolt kit there. We've got the brake mechanism down here. We've got the light down here. And of course, this foam is just protecting the finish. So I kind of am reluctant to really get too much further than this. So what do you think? Should we set this up on the island and then we can get a better view and we'll come right back? Okay, so we've got it up on the island just so it's a little easier for you guys to see what we're doing. And we're just picking up right where we left off. We've still got our big mess over there and we haven't actually unboxed one of these bikes yet, this particular style. We have done a hay bike, one more. And so we'll have links at the end of the video. If you guys are curious to watch um, our review of the Ranger initially, you can do that too. Now, there is a considerable price difference between these bikes. so. When you look online, they look the same. So we're gonna basically have a side-by-side -side at some point, but we don't know exactly how quick that's gonna to come to you. So in the meantime, if you're curious to see what we had to say about that bike, it'll be available right away following this video. You can check it out. So right here, that's gonna be our light mount, the screw that mounts the light, or it might be actually the mud flap cover mount as well. I think it's a combination thing. Okay, so we'll set this here. And then of course the handlebars, they go onto this. It says the aluminum mold ring only used for packaging protection. Please take it off now. The aluminum mold ring. The aluminum mold ring. Did I already take just, off? I think it's just that whole cover piece. Oh, the piece that was up on top. Okay, yeah, that's right. And then there's this label, but I don't know if this label is going to interfere with the bite of the handlebars. So I'm going to carefully peel this off. I don't think it's probably going to make a big difference. Do you take that whole piece off? <clears throat> what? That whole aluminum piece that you're... This? Yeah. I guess, I don't know. Like, isn't that where the handlebar goes? I think, I don't know. Okay. So this is gonna just get cut so we can expose what we're dealing with. And have been very happy with the bike on the first go around for the first, I got about 113 miles on it so far. And what I can say is there's one thing we've had to do in terms of maintenance that I didn't expect. And that is I had to tighten, I had to tighten my right pedal or was it the left pedal? The left pedal, we had to tighten the left pedal about four or five times. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for. If you start to notice a little bit of play in your pedaling, don't be afraid to get in there and tighten it. You'll be surprised. It does actually have the ability to loosen itself. So check that out. I use the provided tools, use one Allen wrench and the um, box end wrench to make an adjustment to it. It's very easy. Okay, this is the controller. Okay, so we're just pulling this stuff off. Is that light? Yep, it's attached. Mm -hmm. So this goes up here. And there's a grommet right here too. That grommet is actually supposed to be in here. Okay. I'm actually gonna just leave it off for now. So then this, has two different hex drives. Nice handles, by the way. Love the handles, mm -hmm. very heavy duty. 
this bike, you can do crazy stuff with it. So it's very nice that you actually have some strength to it. Now, I think you're right, Han. This is bigger than that will go around. So I think you're right, I think that comes off. So the answer to our question is this whole thing must come off. Ah, oh, the yes, whole okay. Thing. So this thing unscrews, it is a cover. I didn't recognize that at first. Oh. And then there's a bunch of spacers and I think the spacers will make up differences in heights. Oh, there is a screw on top too. I didn't recognize that yet. Also, this battery can be taken out and charged separately or can be charged in place. I've always charged mine in place so far, but I'm kind of thinking it might be wise. If you want to come around here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. The key that I couldn't get in from above is going to go in here and then you can unlock the bike. You can unlock the handle. And I don't know how this one unlocks. There it goes. So now it's unlocked. So now I can take this out. You see just how easy that is? You see where that connector is up there? Wow. So that, that connector actually taps power right there. Okay, so it's very heavy duty. You can press this button and see that it's, you press and hold, okay. And then this is the slider that covers up access to the charger. And you can see a little bit about the battery right here. So it's a 20 amp hour, 960 watt hours, <clears throat> 48 volts, charge current's three amps. Okay, so then let's walk this over and we'll get that charging while we're working. So super easy. Now what I want you to do is show this green light too. This green light is very dim right now kind of faint, mm -hmm. but it's bright in our room right now. So usually when I'm charging, it's at the end of an evening ride or whatever. Okay, so we're just gonna plug that in. It's super simple. There's nothing to it. And then the light changes to red. I'm not hearing any cooling fans, so it sounds like that one's solid state. Our first one actually has a cooling fan on it. So the other thing is if you get two different bikes, make sure you watch out for the voltage in case there's a difference. Okay, so this does come off and I need to get a tool out. So that was my next step. Just kind of working through this process. Now there is an instruction manual. And so you can look in the instruction manual and follow some different steps. I can't remember if the instructions were really that helpful on this the first time. This is the tool that you can use to tighten your pedals. And it works really good for that. It comes with all these different tools, which is really nice. So big Allen wrenches all the way down to small. And then these are combination 15 and 13 millimeters, eight and 10 millimeters. And of course I am looking for probably this one. Yep, just so I can undo the screw on top. Now normally you'd be doing this at ground level, but we wanna make sure you guys get a good look at what we're doing. Okay, so that comes out, then there's a little metal cap. Then there's this shaft, which is protective in nature. And then there's this and different spacers. So you can set this to different heights. Pretty cool, very high quality looking. <clears throat> and then of course this is going to go right here, just like that. Pretty cool. If you want to just keep a hand on that for security mm -hmm. there, camera So if you guys are new to the channel on Brian Phillips RC, you're probably wondering what the heck are you doing with a bike? Well, we have done a couple of electric bikes over the years. Uh, it's a personal interest of ours and we enjoy doing it. It's something that fun that we can do with a family. And it's a nice little crossover from the radio controlled airplanes, which are obviously electric. And then the the other electric stuff that we've done. But then again, a lot of you guys like doing a lot of the same things we do and that's why we end up having the overlapping interests on radio controlled airplanes. So if you're curious, this is just one of the brands that we bumped into in our pursuit of trying to find a good e-bike. And we reached out to them the first time and then 
we actually reached out to them a second time because we liked it so much. So now that's what's cool about hay bike so far. And there are a lot of different choices out there. So all I can say is what we see is what we get. And we've been very happy with ours so far. I mean, to the point that I ride it almost every time I go out. Mm -hmm. the kids like to ride their bikes and I ride my bike and we go out and do stuff as a family. It's super fun. Okay, so that's torqued on there now. And then I am disappointed that this appears to be a finished piece. And so I've got a little bit oh. of foam that's stuck on there from the packaging. So I will have to take a little bit of alcohol. Do we have alcohol? I could show the people if that comes off. Because yeah, that is gonna be a finished piece. I can go grab some. Why don't we pause and we'll try that real quick. All right, so we're gonna use rubbing alcohol. This is an isopropyl alcohol. It's like a whatever you use from the medical grade stuff because we find it to be way cheaper than the electronics grade. It's actually a higher percentage of alcohol. Yeah. So I've never really understood that, but. Okay, so not sure that's gonna take it off. Might have to use a nail polish remover, I wonder. Is that plastic or metal, that piece? This is metal. Oh. This is a metal cap. Could also it's, use. Oh, that's coming off when Lemon I scrape. Oil. Lemon oil would take it off. Mm -hmm. So yeah, guys, if you're, if you're curious what we're doing with uh, e-bikes, uh, this is nothing new here on Brian Phillips RC. We just kind of review things that are interesting to us that kind of follow that same uh, front. Of course, we have a strong emphasis on aviation, but then we also do things like leaf blowers. So it's always a hit. <laughs> always a huge hit. The thing leaf is, blowers and tire pressure we checkers. We always make fun of that leaf blower and the kids and I use that leaf blower all the time. All the time and it's awesome. All the time. It gets used multiple times a week probably yep. around here because I can use it and so can both of our older kids. Okay, oh. so cool. I came mostly clean. I could spend a little bit more time but for now I'm just gonna put that back on. Nice clean fit and then lots of Loctite. Wow. Yeah. They were probably it's evidently worried that was going to come Worried about that one? <laughs> so we're just going to set this down in here. Now, obviously, if you wanted that to be, if you wanted your handlebars lower, you could uh, adjust accordingly, I believe. And I think the website recommends the Oops. height on this can be all the way up to a rider that's like 6'3". So. so it might actually be a little bit big for me. Because if I'm 6'1", it'll six, be one great. And a half. Yeah. That was one of the reasons why we were so drawn to the hay bike brand is that they're one of the few that would actually take on a heavier passenger. And so if you're heavier and you're not just stick, then, you know, this might be perfect for you. Um, okay. So this is the sleeve they were referring to. Okay. So we'll, so that'll that just kind for... of get discarded or kept for shipping or whatever, if you would need it, keep, forever until yes. the end of time for, for no reason no reason whatsoever <laughs> yeah favorite <clears throat> okay so we've got the pedals um i could technically put the pedals on it looks like these pedals uh are not folding pedals like they were on the other one on a ranger and honestly that's probably a good thing given this is a little bit heavier bike they seem a little bit more ambidextrous on the top and the bottom okay Show you the other one real quick. So this one's the right one. So it's gonna go on the other side. This one's the left one. <clears throat> it says left pedal counterclockwise, okay? So then this spins. And then I believe you can also take off that cover and maybe get in there too. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. Since this says left. Okay. And there's not, not like some magical solution, some special order that makes this go especially fast or especially slow in our experience. It's a pretty straightforward build. And so if you're not used to seeing long format and you would prefer to have a commercial that uh, makes everything look super easy and fake, then you're in the wrong place. Cause at Brian Phillips RC, we show it the way we get it out of the package. And yes, this is going backward. So I'm having to necessarily run that, run that backward to tighten it. <clears throat> and that's part of what we do here on this channel. So if you find it a little bit strange that it's kind of long, some might call it boring. Uh, we just call it detailed. 
<laughs> oh, is that what we call it? Yeah. Oh. So detail, m- meaning that we, we don't pull any punches, we don't hide stuff for the manufacturers. So when they send us stuff, and make no mistake, if somebody is um, basically confident enough in their product to send us an item for review, they're very confident in their product or they don't know our channel very well. <laughs> And so that's one cool thing that you're going to get here on Brian Phillips RC that you may not get at some competitive offerings is that we are going to show uh, the product in their real, in our real experience with it, um, even if it means that we're critical of it to a degree. Uh, we don't want to be unfair to these different manufacturers that we end up working with, but at the end of the day, we kind of work for you guys and not them. So the cool thing about this, I need to turn, I need to run this bike back. You see that handlebar? Can you go yeah, to the other side? Yeah, you want me to come over here? Now, if you guys decide to build yours on your kitchen island, that might not be the easiest way, but it's the way that we're gonna film. I need to tip so I can spin this. Oh, okay. Have it braced. Um, you're gonna have to lift it up if you can. Um, if you I think you can? Here while I'm okay. holding the camera. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Now just let it rest down. Mm -hmm. So we do build things here on the kitchen island. I have a very understanding wife and camera crew here of many years, many, many, many years. Many, many, <laughs> many airplanes ago. Yes, many, many projects have been done on this island. And uh, of course, she just can't get enough of it. She's like, what can you possibly do <laughs> next that will outdo the last three bikes you built on my right. kitchen island? Mm -hmm. So if you are searching for a spouse <laughs> and you haven't gone over these topics yet, <laughs> you may want to evaluate that before you make any firm commitments. Though this was not in the plan when I made my firm commitments. <clears throat> Are you saying that I lied? No, it just didn't come up. I did, well, I knew that you liked aviation. I knew that you were like in to aviation, but the stuff that you have now didn't exist when we got married. Well, that's true. Would you mind holding that please? Okay, so that's tightened down. We are getting pretty close now. This is, um, we haven't time lapsed or anything like that. And it's not like we're working our tails off or anything. I mean, it's not without a little bit of effort putting this together. But I would say it's still a relatively easy process. Now, one thing I want to brag about from Haybike right now is this light. Mm -hmm. The light on that bike is amazing. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but the fact that you can point the light up and down is huge. Yep. Because when you're driving down the road and it's legitimately dark, oh, it looks like they have the horn in here too. <clears throat> is that similar to the other, to the Ranger? I don't know. I thought it was in a different spot. So that's gonna go there eventually. Now there was some ambiguity about that on the first one, but either way you can move it while you're driving in my experience. And that is super, super nice because I'll tell you what, being able to point the light when you need to make a minor change <clears throat> is invaluable. It can make the difference between a safe ride and a dangerous ride, and it can make the difference between comfortable and uncomfortable. Okay, this of course is the rack. The rack is super sturdy. I love the fact that it comes built in. You can order this with different types of racks. There's a front rack. There's also a basket that you can get for the front or the back. And in my case, I have just the back rack, <clears throat> which is standard, but just keep in mind, if you get the smaller bikes and they fold, those racks will make them significantly bigger. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your considerations. Okay, so we are getting to the point now where we're almost ready to put the front wheel on. I just kind of want to get all these packaging items off of here and make sure there's no damage. I haven't seen anything yet, which is good. Mm -mm. Um, I believe this is a 500 watt. Is this a 500 watt unit or 750 watt? I can't remember. I know it's gonna be good. <clears throat> and that's the other thing too, folks. If you're looking at bikes online and you're looking strictly by specs, be careful because the Chinese have been known to uh, exaggerate slightly. <laughs> So just be aware, if it seems too good to be true, and it costs a third as much, and mm -hmm. it's got twice as much wattage, and eight wheel drive, and it's only a bike, <laughs> then you might wanna question the authenticity of those truth claims. 
So that's one thing we've been very happy with <clears throat> from Haybike is that they've been very uh, good on their specs. The other thing that we liked is a lot of e-bikes are geared more towards commuters. So it's like the smallest, the lightest folds up, mm -hmm. whereas you want something that you're gonna go like. We're gonna go out in that field yes. and drive around on a rough and tumble area. Like a crazy person. I mean, yes. very safely in. Very safely with a helmet all with the time. All security, yes. Helmet, all sorts of safety gear. Um, also, I wanna show you this quick disconnect here. That's pretty nice. There's a quick disconnect for the motor that comes in here. There'll be a, I believe there's a cover that goes over these and there is an arrow that indicates the direction of spinning right there. I love that the brakes are so nice factory. Everything just works really good. Uh, Shivano uh, gear selectors and very easy to use, very high quality. I love the fact that they're disc brakes. I do think it's a little bit interesting. These are just the um, clear reflectors. On the other bike we have, we have orange mm -hmm. on the side. Yeah. So I don't know that that really makes a big difference, but <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna take the spacer out. The spacer just has a few nuts that kind of hold it in um, to keep the yoke spread apart. So be careful there. What I need to do now is I need to set this wheel over here and I wanna do it in such a way, the brake, the brake is here. So that obviously needs to go on this side because we've got the brake mechanism here. And yep, that's definitely moving the front brake. So everything should be pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna take these nuts and back them way off. <clears throat> and then I want to try to get this on without too much trouble. So I'm not sure the easiest way to do it. I know we struggled with this last time, but mostly because we don't want to tip anything over. What do you? If do you I idea? stand up on the counter, can I hold <clears throat> the handlebars up while you get the wheel in place? Yeah, we can. We can do that. That'd be fine. I just want to double check this real quick before we get too far. Okay. Because this um, support system. I believe this is gonna need to be secured at some point too. And I'm thinking it goes down to here. So that must go on the inside, yeah. So this goes like this. This goes like that, okay? Correct? Mm -hmm. That looks correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a lot harder to do that once we get the wheel on. But it might also oh. make it a little harder to put the wheel on. Okay. So we're gonna loosen these bolts. So if you guys are here to watch us put this together and just kind of struggle and uh, chuckle at how hard we make things, then welcome to Brian Phillips RC. You haven't seen nothing yet. Wait till you see a dyno. <laughs> I was like, why do people like <clears throat> watching us struggle? So if you guys also stay tuned, you've probably already seen us drive this bike and uh, I can definitely say that I'm super excited to get on it and see how it does because we've been nothing but impressed with its predecessor. And also um, yesterday, I think I got it to the highest speed I've had it, which was like 27.2, I really? think I was going. Now I had a bit of a tailwind and I was going downhill a little bit. Mm. That's one thing about these bikes, the heavier they are, the harder it is to get up to speed, even with pedaling. And I rarely break 25, but the motor will force you to drive at 25 if you go on speed three and you actually hold down the throttle hard. So it's pretty amazing. And some of these bikes claim to go 25 and then you get them and they'll kind of go like 24. <laughs> this thing goes 25, which is good because 25 is, is plenty good. Um, I mean, of course, more would be better, but there are limits to all these things. I'm not 100% sure which direction this is supposed to go. I'm going to err on the outside here. Okay, so just get this in here. So it's mostly tight, but not tight. And then same thing here. Kind of feed that through. 
Very simple. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So then this is gonna go on the front. If you wanna give them a shot so they can see from the front, that'd be probably helpful. So I've got the three screws loose. I believe this is gonna go on the front like this. Okay. And then this is gonna be held together like that. So we need this bag. And it's kind of a long screw, a single lock nut, two washers. <clears throat> Not lock nut, but uh, nylock, I should say. So I think that has to go back here. I don't know which side, if the nut's gonna look better going forward. I think it's gonna look better going this way. Let's just feed that through. Whoops. Just kind of lean this up. Now I gotta say, do you remember we did a competitive offering, one of our first e-bikes, and I think mm -hmm. we spent longer putting that mud flap on than we did we building did. the rest of the bike. Yeah. So that was, <clears throat> that was not very fun. Okay, so we're just gonna get this tightened on here. I'm curious, so far we haven't run into anything that the tools didn't allow us to do that were provided with the unit. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, very happy about that because obviously some of you guys are gonna get this bike and say, oh shoot, I don't have you know, a 15 millimeter wrench. I've only got standard sizes or whatever. Or if you're getting this as a gift, then you don't have to worry as much if they're gonna have access to the tools that maybe you've got that they don't. Okay, so I'm gonna just tighten this a little bit more. This has been just a really, really easy build. I bet the worst part is basically getting stuff out of the box by far. This part's a little tricky because I have to kind of be in two places at once and I'm struggling to figure out the best way to do it. There we go. But even the, even the bracket allows for room with the tool. Mm -hmm. That is unusual. Okay, so we've got that tightened. Now I'm just gonna straighten that up. So that looks pretty, pretty good. A Little bit of flexibility in that. I don't think that's gonna be a big problem. I'm sure it'll get banged up with rocks and stuff. I haven't noticed any issues with rocks getting trapped on my mud flaps, so that's always good. Okay, so our next step is gonna be to actually get the wheel in, so we're gonna reset and come right back. Okay, so the camp crew is now on the island, <laughs> so that's always cool. So I was just realizing that we never actually put the chair in. So the chair is gonna just slip in here real quick. And you can see there's a really big height range. That's the max height. And you can bring it all the way down. So I'm just gonna put it at the max height setting, um, which is probably about where I'm gonna end up running it. And I do like that this chair is so easy to put on and off. And the one thing I did notice about my other Ranger is that you will get a little bit of wear and tear on this. So just be aware of that. All right, so we're getting ready to put this front wheel on and I'm gonna use a zip tie to hold the back brake so that it's engaged fully. And then what's gonna happen is that's gonna give us the ability to uh, pivot the bike easily while the camera crew is holding <laughs> the camera. So not something you guys might have to do in your application, but as you can see now, the brake is gonna, it's gonna be kept on the back so I can tip this bike, okay? So between the camera crew and I, we're gonna just go ahead and get this wheel on, which is a little bit tricky to do while filming, but it's not gonna be near as bad for you guys at home. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and try it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not an overly heavy bike. Megan can hold it up without too much trouble. And I'm just gonna loosen this up. It's gonna allow me to keep this, get this spacer out of here. Keeper. You doing okay up there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it just comes with a little bit of plastic on either side. 
You still got that under control yep. up there? <laughs> Okay, now you're gonna have to hold nice and still okay. so I can get this lined up. This is a little bit tricky. Might be easier to just take the hardware off altogether, but I guess I'd rather not if I can avoid it. So we've got a nut on either side and then a little safety clamp. Okay, I'm gonna pull it toward me okay. a little bit. Can I pull it toward me? Yeah. Oh, I think my brake is bound. So I'm just trying to figure out how to get the brake aligned so that the brake caliper and the brake disc line up. Because <clears throat> right now the disc is not quite making it into the slot between the two brake discs. Hey, there we go. So now I'm in there. Okay. So try not to get pinched. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then just trying to get this I'm gonna have to loosen the nut quite a bit more just so I can spin around the safety clips. Okay, so the safety clip on one side is around. Hey, can you stop that from leaning mm, right there? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the safety clip is on this side so I can just get that mostly tight. Okay, you still doing good up there if I twist it? Yep. Push it out toward me. Okay, there okay. you go. Okay, so now I'm going to torque them down. Are you still good up there if I tighten yeah. this? So obviously if you decide you want to take this to a professional bike shop or whatever, that would be also a really good idea. If you're not real handy with tools, then that might be the easiest way for you to avoid having conflicts. Okay, so that's nice and tight. This is not an overly long tool, so mm -hmm. when you go to torque everything down, just be aware if you wanna actually put more, more leverage to it, then you're gonna to have to use a cheater and cheaters are generally frowned upon, so. Okay, so now that those are on, there's some covers. These covers don't go here, by the way. They go oh. on the back. Wait, where do they go? Because they um, don't- There are places on the back where it looks like you could use a cover. There's no cover there. They definitely don't fit there. They definitely don't fit there. Oh, Where wheel? do these things go? Hmm. Do they go in the ends of your <laughs> steering? I don't know where <laughs> the heck they're supposed to. They're definitely smaller than I huh. can suspect. And they're not for the pedals. Yeah. I don't know what the I heck they're for. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll come back to that after a little bit. But uh, we're going to pause and move around the camera curve. Okay, so a couple tools that we used. We had paper towels and scissors, just a regular utility knife, nothing special there. And then we used a pair of lineman pliers. You could use regular pliers. That was just to pull staples. And then we had side cutters, which was predominantly for cutting zip ties. Everything else that we used came in this kit. And so I just wanted to point out the fact that we do have these tools that came with it. So if you need to tighten something, they give you tools to do most all of this stuff. If you ever need to get into your controller, there's four screws here. And then that comes off and there's a little controller inside of there that controls all the electronic goodies. Um, and then of course it also allows for the discharge rate of the battery and also controls the controller screen. So all of that comes back. And if you ever get one of these bikes and something doesn't turn on for you, don't be alarmed by all this uh, loomed up wire, you can actually take this Velcro right off and then all this stuff is accessible and it's quite easy to get to, okay? So if you have one feature that maybe doesn't turn on right away, um, don't worry, it's really easy. Just undo that Velcro and you can chase right through and see everything right there. And if yours is like mine, you need to watch for this grommet. <clears throat> if you wanna trade sides there, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. This grommet on mine, was popped out. So I meant to do this earlier, but it was just easier now that we have the wheel on. That grommet is just to help avoid chafing of the cables as they pass through the frame. Okay, so pretty simple. And if you look at these welds, they look really clean and chunky. <laughs> There's a lot of them. And uh, we haven't had a bit of problems with our 
frame on the Ranger. So this one is quite a bit bigger bike, mm -hmm. which I'm very excited about. Um, I am a little bit weirded out by these things. I don't know <laughs> if they're supposed to be caps for the front or if they're just supposed to be caps for a totally different bike. But one way or another, we're gonna figure that out maybe at some point. And uh, I am excited to explore with the Explore because it is gonna be super exciting. So we hope that you guys enjoyed this unbox build and uh, obviously no radio set up here today. But what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna show you taking it off the counter. Yes, we're gonna do it live for you oh. because it is a heavy bike uh, compared to you know a, a non-electric bikes. And uh, there is a zip tie that we put on here, remember? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slip that off. Okay, so now the brakes should be off. We can go ahead and take this thing off of the island. Now, the thing that's really nice when you do have to move this bike, because it is a bigger bike, is that you can actually take and hang on to the frame. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. It's a pretty heavy bike. But you can see that goes all the way around. Wow. Which is awesome. And then obviously they've got the step through frame here, which is really nice. It's a little bit tight. I'm getting a little bit squished there and bad spots. But as you can see, we have good length pedals. We have better ground clearance, significantly better ground clearance than we did on the Ranger. That was one of my concerns mm -hmm. with the Ranger. And you can see I'm actually gonna have to lower the seat on this bike, which is wonderful. I'm very happy about that. Also, there's quite a little bit of adjustability in the way that all the handlebar assembly works. I'm probably gonna have to turn, in fact, I'm gonna look at that right now, because you can see this, this is too low. That's gonna need to come up quite a bit. <clears throat> so we'll take a quick look at that. So that build probably took us, what, about 20 minutes or so? Between if, 20 and 30. If I was alone unboxing it, maybe another 10 minutes. So 30 minutes while filming is very fast, guys. If you're doing that, Oh yeah, look at that, right there. Got lucky, it was the first one I tried. Oh man, those ones are torqued in there really good. So I'm gonna loosen these four. I don't wanna loosen them too much because all I wanna do is just pivot things a little bit. I think I'm getting the right side. Yeah, I am. So this just turns out, uh, this last little bit is just kind of a, you know, preference things. I want to get these handles pivoted forward just a little bit. And then the way you turn the bike on, yeah, I can tell this is definitely not quite right because the controls should be pivoted up quite a bit. And then this does rock a little bit, if I remember right. And there is a protective cover on it. I'm not even going to remove that just quite yet because I love the way it looks right now and I want to keep it that way as long as possible. Special thanks to Haybike for sending this for review. We uh, have been super happy with our Haybike so far. If you guys want to buy one, we will have a link in the video description below. If you buy one from our link, then you'll be helping to support our family. And of course the content that you see here on Brian Phillips RC, that is after all how we fund the channel is through commissions from sales on products that we review here. We never want to talk you guys into buying something you don't really want, but we want to help to confirm for you that you're making a good decision on some of these bigger ticket items. We find that it would be, we think it would be very helpful to have somebody that's coming to you with truthful advice. Okay, so there's a throttle there. There's your uh, gearbox, just a regular uh, there's no trigger shift. Looks like we've got brake, brake. A little bit more play on this side than that. So the rear brake, of course, front brake. Lock and unlock. So that's locked. At first, when I got the Ranger, I thought I was gonna hate that feature, but I love it. It makes it so much more comfortable to ride and I almost never have any issues with it. <clears throat> I thought I would, but I don't. It's very nice. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like the throttle there. I haven't decided if I like that or not. It's like a motorcycle style throttle. So I'm not feeling that 
It doesn't feel like it wants to pivot for me. I think I need to loosen it even more. It's just really tight. There's just a lot of stuff going on right there. Okay, so we just had to loosen a little bit more here. Oh, there we go, finally. Yeah, there, there we go. go, so much better. <laughs> okay, so that seems way better for what I want. And I'm just kind of visualizing, I'm, I'm thinking about if I'm sitting here, um, what the angle I want it to be at. And that's probably about what I want there. So now I can torque that down. <clears throat> this is something you definitely want to do when you first get a bike. It's just kind of get it tailored so that it fits your body well. Um, probably the biggest safety feature um, on a bike is the properly adjusted bike. Make sure your brakes work. Make sure everything is in a comfortable position. So you can see what you need to see when you need to see it and you can respond accordingly. Now this one needs to rotate just a little bit too and it looks like that's actually using a smaller mm -hmm. Allen. So just to be clear, it does not have that Allen uh, included. <clears throat> oh, one other thing we have learned about our kickstand is that we have had exceptionally good luck with the kickstand on the Ranger. I can tell this uses a similar style and we just, love the fact that it's strong enough to actually work. We've had so many kickstands that don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so strange that you would think that'd be such a simple thing, but if you start getting into the lighter duty stuff, I was hoping that I might get lucky and see if I've got this right up here. Oh, it's actually 2.5 millimeter, I think. Would you look at that? Yeah. 2.5 millimeter. And this is just gonna pivot the screen up a little bit or it's gonna allow me to pivot the screen up a little bit. Again, preference issues here, just full disclosure. There's also a <clears throat> potential adjustment there on the side too for the screen. Yeah, that's gonna be a, a, a different type of mm -hmm. pivot. I'm just trying to pull that up just a little, just a little bit, bit more so I can see the screen better. Mm -hmm. And then that would allow you to lay it back flatter. So it's a nice little setup. Now keep in mind, when you do this, make sure you don't get your wires pulled too tight. That's pretty dang tight right there. So I'm gonna walk this one zip tie back just to buy me some slack. Same thing with that one, it's quite tight. So I might actually rotate that back a little bit as well. So just a two and a half on that side. And this is a two and a half as well on this side. We'll just rotate that back so it can kind of flatten out a little bit more. Uh, well, I guess I can tolerate that too. So maybe we won't get as lucky on that as I was hoping. Okay, so everything is better adjusted there now. As, as far as the height of the chair goes, that's a super standard thing. You just get that where you want, you tighten this thumb nut, and then you can go ahead and clamp it to get it set permanently. And I think I'm gonna go about, about like that for me. And since Megan and I will both share this bike, she'll probably end up riding the Ranger more, I bet, now that we've got this one. Mm -hmm. And then I'll end up riding this one. <clears throat> but it's such an easy adjustment. It's really nice. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, I usually still find that I throw my leg over the back and then of course, we're gonna have to put pressure in the tires. And you actually need to tighten the other two on the top of that handlebar. That's mm -hmm. why we were moving that screen. Oh, is that what we were doing? Mm -hmm. okay. Just so we don't forget, I'm just looking at that. Perfect. Yeah, I can definitely tell the length of the frame is quite a bit bigger. So that should all work to my advantage. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna tighten those screws and come right back. Okay, so if you're using a standard Allen wrench, I've always found, this is again, another Crescent wrench. I've always found it to be really helpful. If I'm trying to get in here and torque something down, you've kind of committed yourself to the longer reach. Then you can get in here like this and you can use that to get your leverage and really torque things down nicely. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. If you work on bikes, I'm sure you guys have probably run into a lot of this stuff before, but it is nice. If nobody's ever showed you, that's a trick you can use every day when you're working on mechanical stuff. Really handy, because then you can get past, in this case, the wiring and things like that. Of course, you wouldn't have to have that tool, but it just makes it a lot easier 
especially given that I've already tightened this down to put it in its position. So once this is done, we kind of pause so we could tighten that down and I said, I better share this detail. But also the other thing I want to do is I can tell that this bike seat is tipped up a little bit and I'd prefer it to actually be, I've hit the release now, I prefer it to ride just a little bit more forward facing and a little bit less like that. So what I want to do is just kind of tip it like that. And so in order to tip this chair, just like most, you're going to have to loosen that. So again, we do get um, a total of four different sizes that come with the bike, but you may find that it's easier to just use a crescent wrench or a sizable wrench. I'm going to just show you guys if this works first. There's a 13 millimeter. feels pretty good. I, I would imagine that's about right. And uh, definitely not 10, definitely not 15. So that should be fine. And this gives you forward play and back play, as well as your pitch control. Goodness gracious. And these are always confusing to me because there's one on either side. So you can actually have to turn it the right way, but it's acting like it's not wanting to loosen. These are usually way tight. Come in here and try to loosen it. Oh man, that's just really tight. I think I'm gonna upgrade my tool a little bit. <laughs> I don't want it to break free in a weird way. So really all I have to do is loosen this a little bit so I can tip the seat. And then that'll make me a little bit more comfortable when I'm sitting on it. Goodness gracious. So again, some of these adjustments are just adjustments. There's nobody saying that you have to adjust them like this. Maybe you prefer to have it exactly the way it comes out of the box. In my case, I just want to make it just so. Oh yeah, there we go. So that wasn't too bad. A little bit more actually necessary. And we've always found, especially with kids' bikes, that the cheapest bikes have no adjustments or they have the absolute bare minimum adjustment. So if you're lucky, you'll have a seat that goes up and down. Okay. So now I can tip this to where I like it. And then I can also go forward or backward. And I think I want it most of the way back, but I like that angle a little bit better. So it's kind of almost flat with this surface here. Okay. So now that that's tightened or in place, I'm going to just tighten it back up. Just give it one. You probably have to go about two. Now be careful you don't dig into your seat when you're doing this because it is close to the seat. And for those of you that would prefer to pay a professional to make your adjustments, I completely think that would be a wise investment on a bike of this caliber. Now one other thing I did on my uh, Ranger that I feel like I might do on this bike too is I felt I wanted a little bit tighter play on the brakes. Okay, the brakes were fine and they did stop, but I wanted to have less of a throw before it engaged. So again, preference issue here, but just you see how far you have to move that before it engages. Now I'm gonna show you what I did and then you guys can make up your own minds if you wanna kinda give them a shot over here. So this is how the brake system is adjusted. The easy way is to just loosen this and then you just pull this linkage through <clears throat> and then that'll just start the bite earlier or later, mm. depending on where you put it. Mm -hmm. So it's super easy and let's see if they provided the necessary tools for that adjustment. It looks like they probably did. I've got this Allen wrench here. I'm actually just gonna kind of support the bike like this so you guys can see. And as you can see, that definitely goes in. Now when I do this, it's gonna to wanna to pop free, okay? So now that's loosened. See how it's slipping down? Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, see how it slipped through? That's all part of the show, guys. Okay, so what I need to do now is just pull the slack down. So the camera crew and I are gonna pause and we'll get reset for that. Okay, so we just reposition the bike so you guys can get a better shot of that. Okay, so then 
Obviously, this is not going to break. So then I can just take this, pull it down. You can see where it was kind of squished in there before. And I want to tighten it. So I can just kind of pre-break a little bit. And then usually it doesn't take much. Okay, now what I want to do is just see if my brakes are... Oh yeah, still got a little bit of play there. So we'll see if that's enough. I'll probably still have to fiddle with that a little bit. But if you guys decide to make that same adjustment, just be aware that as with any adjustment on brakes, make sure you get it tight. Make sure you get it so that you're gonna be able to stop the thing. So that's always handy when you're going down a hill. Um, okay, cool. So I think the next thing you're gonna be seeing is just in a couple minutes, we'll see if the battery is done charging. Okay, so one quick detail upon closer inspection. These front fork covers, we looked at the manual and it does say to put them on. And so I said, there's no way they look so small. Well, they actually just stretch out kind of a lot and that's good because that means they'll stay on. Um, so I'll just do this one for you here. See how much smaller that is? It's like, there's no way that's gonna go on, but yet it will. You really gotta, you really gotta work it wow. to get it on there, but it goes. So that's, that's pretty sweet. I'm, I'm glad that went. Um, although the black on black on matte black, just, it all looks really good. So I'm super excited. I love the way this bike looks and, um, I'm glad I went with the black, even though I know it comes in a couple of different color schemes. I think this is going to look great. So also we had mentioned this before on our review of the Ranger, <clears throat> but I love the fact that it actually has a drink holder. I know it seems like a minor detail, but for me, I don't hardly ever put a drink in there. Usually what I have is like a hammer or some random, <laughs> tool. you know, like fence mending tool yeah. and I will stick it in there and it is invaluable. I have used it almost every time I go and do a project with the bike. So having the rack back here is super nice, but having that drink holder is surprisingly like way better than I thought. I thought it would just be kind of in the way, but it's not. So really happy with that so far. Our battery is still charging. So we're gonna pick this up whenever the battery's done, but we've spent roughly an hour or so mm -hmm. on actually unboxing and getting this thing ready to go. And we are super excited to get out and ride it. But for now, we're gonna be patient people and uh, try to act um, like adults. But we hope that you guys wanna buy one of these too, because it is going to be awesome and I cannot wait to get out and show you how great it is. You guys have already seen it, but we haven't. So looking back into my future ball, I think it was amazing. And if you wanna buy one, follow the link in the video description below is the best way you can support our channel and help us to uh, kind of get a pat on the back. Obviously YouTube prefers to have short little catchy ads where people do sliding, you know, breaking maneuvers and things like this that really gain you nothing as an audience. Um, we, we want you guys to buy things that we review, obviously, because that's how we fund the stuff. But really at the end of the day, we answer to you and not to the manufacturers that we work with, uh, the distributors, the, the hobby shops, the different, uh, companies that we work with to bring you all sorts of new content, new and exciting items. Um, we really are, uh, we owe a debt of gratitude, but at the same time, at the end of the day, we really wouldn't have any of that if we didn't have an audience watching the channel. So we appreciate you guys. We have the world's best audience on YouTube right here at Brian Phillips RC. Also check out www.brianphillipsrc.com. We have things laid out in a fashion that might be helpful to you because we have so much content, it is getting hard to find, like we can barely find it. So the thing is, at the end of the day, we appreciate you coming back and watching more. Don't, for, don't forget to click the bell for notifications if you're new to the channel. We're putting out content sometimes three to five times a week. Generally speaking, we're gonna have a ground vehicle feature in the middle of the week, and then we're gonna have air beginning and end of the week. And then sometime on the weekends, we'll do things like this because it's a little bit out of the ordinary. Don't worry, the out of the ordinary does not necessarily take anything away from our ordinary channel stuff. So just keep that in mind. If you're watching this and thinking, you know, I wish you'd do this or I wish you'd do that. Well, don't worry. If you ever think that, just wait like till Tuesday or wait till Wednesday or wait till Thursday or wait till next week because we always have new content coming on Brian Phillips RC where we do in-depth 
reviews. We try to prevent one and dones on people that are doing new aviation, uh, RC aviation. And then of course we're doing PPG and stuff like that too. But that stuff is kind of coming along pretty slow right now. It's been a busy summer. So we appreciate you guys being here. Don't miss a second. Click the bell for notifications. If you haven't already subscribed, obviously subscribe and then give us a like if you enjoy the content or if you enjoy the products. But if you hate the products and you love the content, give us a like anyway. It really does help us to understand that you like what we're doing. And obviously um, we are trying to be responsive to our demands of all the people out there watching. So just let us know in the comments below if you have questions, we'll do our best to get to them and uh, leave the comments as well. And we appreciate you. Stay tuned, so much more to come from Brian Phillips RC.